You know, one of those questions I still get a lot, um, I, well, this is going to be kind of a two-parter right here, uh, is tell me the difference between using like a dry powdered humic acid product versus a liquid humic acid product. Um, and that's a really good question. Um, in, in lawn care, in, in the fur business, we do a lot of things based on uh, concentrations of material per dollar that it costs, okay? So, you know, when you're factoring out your budgets for the year and um, starting to get everything, we, we kind of cost it all out in this, like, how many dollars per thousand, and hopefully it's not how many dollars, it's you know, that's in the course of the year. Um, but with Humic, uh, and I've seen, since it has been finally truly adopted, I say finally, it's been for you know a few years, but you know really finally adopted as a good method for turf grass health and for soil health, uh, and, and accepted widespread. You have a lot of different options, a lot of different marketplace options, and um, you know some that are sold in in like a powdered or in a granular form. Uh, you know have these analyses uh, up to 65, 70 percent, kind of in that range, and. Um, that's really good. Now, if it's derived from linardite shale, naturally that material is going to be around that um, that amount, uh, depending on where it's coming from. You know, you can have ranges in the field between 38% uh, up to 80%, um, and and that's just the concentrations of humic acids in the linardite or in the peat material, if, if people are using that, that's usually a considerably less concentration. Um, but you have to think about it like this. That material has not been reacted. It has not been uh, broken away to, to have those free-forming acids move into an available, uh, more available form, okay? The benefit you get out of a, a dry, um, humic is the carbon component, which is a significant amount of ash, uh, which if anybody's paid attention to talking about like biochar and things like that, there's a lot of ash in linardite shale, right? So you've got a material that has uh, a lot of surface area and can really help benefit other materials that are going out, okay? So it's not necessarily that you're getting a benefit because you have such a high concentration of humic happening. The fact of the matter is, a lot of that is just going to stay in, in its form. It takes a, a big reaction to be able to free those acids up into soil profile. So, uh, you know, another one that people say is it's a, it's a food for microbes. Well, it's not. It's, it's already done. That's, that's, not really a part of it you know if there's a uh, it's more of a creates a, a better space for uh, microbial activity to take place uh, which is going to utilize then the other material but because it's not a simple carbohydrate it, it's not really a food uh, and because there's not really nitrogen tied to it maybe there's a tiny tiny bit it's not enough to like you know give you this this microbial flush. That's not that's not how it works. It's just kind of creating spaces for better colonization. But then because you've created the porosity, now some of your other fertilizing materials will work better, more efficiently. So that, that's kind of your benefit. On the other side of that, you know, we, we focus on liquids and as uh, the granular products come out, there's obviously going to be some um, uh, powdered humic in there that, that is formed uh, as well, but the liquid side of things, the humic acids have been reacted up into the solution. It's not a suspension, it's an actual solution. So there's a big difference there. You know, you can take maybe a pound of a 70% humic acid material, throw it in a gallon of water and end up at your 12% or whatever, but it's not the same. Now, you could take that same material, soak it for a long period of time, and likely get a fulvic 
uh, release or um, you know something else that would kind of pull up into a lighter molecule but if you just put that material in into a gallon of water and let it sit overnight you'll see that it, it doesn't really it doesn't really come apart what you'll start to see in the water is um, more of the the fulvic fraction starting to release through like a, a through a water release so the efficacy in say like farming and on turf grass and things like that and general use just for ease of use liquids have just dominated that market because it's such a, a low amount to get a better more measurable result so in agriculture you may only use two to three gallons an acre a year it's, it's really not very much uh, where if you were having to put the powder out it could be four or five six hundred pounds to get the same result so now we're starting to talk about dollars and results and you know at the rate to where a lot of these granulated humix are being sold it's so high uh, for what you're going to get out of it um, you know just to, for the average DIY person um, you're gonna see rates on on small amounts that could cost you $125 an acre um, on the lowest possible rate which isn't gonna do you a lot of good you know getting it up into the measurement to where it would actually give you a lot of benefit you're gonna be probably three or four hundred dollars an acre and that is crazy crazy high um, pro rates are gonna vary and that's gonna drop down um, significantly with volume I mean there's a big difference between buying uh, 15 pounds of something and thousands of pounds of something but it's still a high cost and that really needs to be measured out uh, to where you can get you know your standard spray solution spray your material without having the clogging and you know having to filter stuff or do any crap like that because it's already been done and your liquids are just that much more effective so I really think it's important to, you know, concentrations are one thing, okay? So understanding the sort of agronomic math that goes on and, you know, if I've got a 50-pound uh, bag of something that's 20% compared to a gallon something that's 20%, the only difference could ultimately be app rate, okay? So it's always the same if I had 50 pounds of liquid at 20% and I had 50 pounds of granular at 20% I have the exact same amount of active in both of those materials and now it's just going to come down to app rate so uh, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that for a minute because there's there's a ton of questions that come out and as a humic producer uh, you know we get our material right out of the mines it's brought into us and uh, we reacted there in the plant in Georgia. Um, and there's a few other great guys. Steve Rinkin uh, in Nebraska, uh, who has a, an incredible setup out there. He's doing uh, amazing things with his fulvic extraction. And, um, you know, this is a it's, a, it's more than just mixing a powder into liquid. And, and I think that everybody needs to understand um, how we've gotten to where we are is by pushing how effective this material can ultimately be and that's that's really why we've had so much success in this marketplace so there you go this is a little little blurby blurb for you while I'm driving this is when the, this is when the thoughts go through my head yeah.